this video is uh, a topic which is used in commercial arithmetic in class 12 mathematics applications of calculus in commerce and economics coming to certain terms total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost where cx is the cost function rx is the revenue function which is p into x where p is the price per unit x is the number of units capital px is the profit function and profit function is revenue minus cost so at break even point revenue equal to cost or rx equal to cx coming to an example a television manufacturer finds that the total cost of producing and marketing x television sets is cx equal to 300x squared plus 4200x plus 13500 each product is sold for Rs. 8400. Determine the break-even points. At the break-even point, Cx equal to Rx. So I have 300x squared plus 4200x plus 13500 equal to 8400x. Dividing throughout by 100, you get 3x squared minus 42x plus 135 equal to 0. Dividing by 3, you get x squared minus 14x plus 45 equal to 0. Factorizing, you get x minus 9 into x minus 5 equal to 0. So your break-even points are 9 and 5. Next example, the daily cost of production C for Y pens is given by CY equal to 2.05Y plus 550. If each pen is sold at rupees 3, determine the minimum number of pens that must be produced and sold daily to ensure no loss. Now revenue function is 3 into y, cost per pen into number of pens. So at the break even point, cost function equal to revenue function. So I have 2.05y plus 550 equal to 3y or y equal to 578.94. So about 578 pens should be produced and sold daily to ensure no loss. If the selling price is increased by 30 paise per unit, what would be the new break-even point for the same problem? So now we have 2.05y plus 550 that is the cost function equal to 330y. Original price was 3 and now it is 3 plus 30 paise that is 330y. Simplifying we get 1.25y is 550 or y equal to 440 that is the new break-even point. If it is known that 500 pence can be sold daily, what price should the company charge per piece to ensure no loss? So let x be the price charged per piece. So we have 2.05y, y is the number of pence that is 500 plus 550 equal to 500 number of pence into price per piece that is x. So this is the cost function and this is the revenue function. Simplifying we get x equal to 350. Next, we come to certain new terms that is average cost is total cost by x, marginal cost is ddx of the total cost that is derivative of the total cost and marginal average cost will be derivative of the average cost. The average cost for a commodity is given by average cost is x plus 5 plus 36 by x where x is the output. Find the total cost and marginal cost as a function of x. Now total cost is average cost into x so that would be x squared plus 5x plus 36. Marginal cost is derivative of the total cost which is 2x plus 5. Find the output for which average cost increases. To find the output for which average cost increases we find the derivative of the average cost and find the range for which average cost is the derivative is greater than 0. Your de derivative, your average cost is x plus 5 plus 36 by x. Differentiating with respect to x, you get 1 minus 36 by x squared. We want this to be greater than 0 because the average cost is increasing. Taking the LCM, you get x squared minus 36 by x squared greater than 0. Your denominator is anyway greater than 0. So I have x plus 6 into x minus 6 is greater than 0. That is x squared minus 36. So we divide the real line into intervals take 6 and minus 6 and mark alternate plus and minus starting from the rightmost interval as explained in quadratic inequalities so it is greater than 0 when x greater than 6 or x less than minus 6 
but x is the output so x cannot be less than minus 6 so x is greater than 6. Next example, the demand function is x equal to 24 minus 2p by 3, where x is the number of units demanded, p is the price per unit. Find the revenue function r in terms of p. Now revenue function is px, that is p into 24 minus 2p by 3, so I get 8p minus 2p squared by 3. Find the price and number of units demanded for which revenue is minimum. Now revenue is 20 is sorry, 8p minus 2p squared by 3. To find the minimum revenue, first we take the first order derivative of the revenue with respect to p. So differentiating this with respect to p, I get 8 minus 4p by 3. We equate the first order derivative to 0. So I get 8 minus 4p by 3 is 0. So we get 8 equal to 4p by 3 or p equal to 6. To find the second order derivative, we take the de derivative, second order derivative of, dr, of revenue. So that would be minus 4 by 3. This in any case is less than 0. So by second derivative test, revenue is minimum when p equal to 6. And we need to find the output. So the x is the output which is 24 minus 2p by 3. Substitute p equal to 6, so we get x equal to 6. So number of units is 6.